Scott Gross. Scott Gross, is that his name? Scott is uh, out in L.A. I work fast and I'm a deal. I write and get up. God, that, that guy's great. But none of them understand that, like, Cleveland is a bombed out third world hellhole. I go on and on. Well, that was tremendous fun. The cat, cat hair apocalypse. Baby, it's like Mad Max, but with cats. Like cat apocalypse. For being on some chill shit. Oh Lord, got a whole lot to show for it. I mean, we can really get it. We can go for it. Oh Lord, got a whole lot to show for it. I mean, we can really get it. We can go for it. Oh Lord. and nonsense. It's a combination of stupidity. Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of That Drawing Show. I'm back again here in the saddle. And uh, as promised, I did do some drawing at the diner. I was meeting a friend of mine who was also a caricature artist for breakfast the other day. And uh, I figured I would uh, bring the sketchbook and we would sketch together. And as it turned out, uh, he was late, so I had plenty of time. Um, I always recommend bringing a sketchbook wherever you are. Uh, whether or not you're a professional artist, it's a great way to maintain your peace of mind um, while you're waiting in line or sitting, waiting for a table or waiting for your name to be called for some whatever reason. But uh, especially if you're an artist, uh, there's no substitute for reps, uh, time under tension, as they say in the gym. So. Uh, yeah, here I am at uh, Norm Sketching, and I can just say, reviewing this, um, one thing that I almost always do is save my sketchbooks and then um, go back over them, and that will definitely be a forthcoming part of the show, where we go over sketchbook drawings and um, try to redraw them the best we can. But just reviewing this, I started down here um, with... Uh, I think I started here this was the first uh, drawing I did and uh, you know page I did and uh, just as a talk about how to I draw in my sketchbook I use a very basic sketchbook 
that you can usually find at 99 cent stores or discount stores. Um, I actually got this from reading uh, Alex Toth's biography and uh, Toth himself would use a um, Pentel sign pen. Um, this is probably best done on this hand. Yeah, a Pentel sign pen on a five by seven sheet. And, um, or this is a six by eight, I'm sorry, on a six by eight sheet. Um, six by eight, 50 sheets, lightweight. But you know what, actually, the key thing is for me, if you really wanna know why I choose this sketchbook and what makes a great sketchbook for me, it's the thin um, spiral. I hate a big blocky spiral. You want this thing to be small enough that you can fit it kind of here and you can maybe put it in your pants. I mean, this is even too big. If it was five by seven, I might even be more happy. But this is what I use. And, um, you know, just getting started, of course, you're a little bit, um, a little bit tight, but um, as I started getting more loose, uh, I thought this one was nice. I like that graphic nose. And I did this woman in profile. I wish I would have had more of a chance to draw her whole face. I thought this was nice because uh, this one was nice because I was able to um, capture a guy, a, a woman sitting there and a man sitting there and they weren't necessarily in this pose, but um, uh, that's the kind of cheeky interplay that would work in a caricature environment is have a woman next to a man. Now, of course, the proportions are a little bit off here. You want, uh, you want her to be, uh, you know, bigger like that, maybe even a bit behind him. But huh, that's for the final thing. This one, the girl was kind of a, um, a uh, typical, uh, somewhat awkward looking uh, teenager, but she had a, you know, slightly Kardashian look to her. And uh, I thought about uh, my great uh, friend and uh, uh, occasional partner, Damon Renthrope, and how beautiful he does uh, his uh, women. And, uh, you know, the reality is that even though there are some great artists who are making a great living, cartooning the hell out of people in a very particular setting. I don't know if I'm in that setting. I'm in Los Angeles, California. People want to look beautiful. People want to look alluring. Um, and uh, if I could do something like this, and you know, the nice thing about a drawing like this is that, uh, let's see, uh, hold on. Even if you are on a kind of a vertical Even if you're in a vertical, oh, we're going to see that later. Even if you're in a vertical setting, like a caricature, and let's say you can't do a full body and you end up just doing a head for whatever reason, maybe time, you could probably pull off something like this. pretty quickly, right? Am I wrong? Well, I know we don't have the music playing. Let's start the music. <laughs> Let's find out. Um, yeah, I feel like we could pull off something like this pretty quickly here. Um, even, even if it didn't have that. You know, uh, by using more detail and color and drawing uh, the viewer kind of into the drawing this way, um, you can get away with not drawing anything over here. <laughs> and, you know, from a time perspective, that's really all I'm just thinking about is, you know, how can doing something like this 
make um, work in a caricature environment, you know? I think it could. Okay. Um, that we're going to get to in a second. Anyway, back to our Danny's drawings here. Um, as we wor worked around the people kind of sitting at the uh, entrance way, this guy turned out kind of funny. Uh, some faces are easier than others. You know, if you're just dealing with like a basic construction like this, kind of a shelf here, and then you're just looking to put a shape on top, you know what I mean? Uh, that is a formula, you know? Let's see if we can just capture that here. You know what I mean? That's like a thing. You know what I mean? If you can capture this, you capture a lot of different people's faces. And I suppose, to some extent, we could probably do a study of this type of, uh, this type of shape and maybe vary it in different ways, right? Just these ingredients. These are the type of flights of fancy that one goes on when in um, line waiting at norms. That's why I always recommend going to norms, people. It's also good if you want to gain weight. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's really maybe part and parcel why nobody goes there. But um, it's usually pretty packed, believe me. Yeah. Right on. Worth. It's worth. Uh, not everything, not everybody fits into this space. And certainly, we're not really paying a lot of attention to um, the uh, cheekbones here that can really define somebody's, some people's faces, you know what I mean? So, there is that to be said, but. Yeah, it was a fun time at the diner. Okay, let's talk about today's uh, exercise. We've been talking about full body caricatures for a while now. And um, just the idea that I would love to be able to do um, performances where it's not all about trying to caricature the people's faces and um, contending with people's insecurities about their faces. Uh, especially when oftentimes people will, especially women, accessorize themselves and dress themselves and uh, do their hair in a way to not make it all about their faces. So why am I making it about their faces when they're wearing um, two, three hundred dollars worth of sneakers or whatever it is? So I thought, okay, let's make a caricature style that incorporates outfits and jewelry and then it just comes down to how fast can you do it? And uh, certainly, it's just about mileage. It's about how many lines you're drawing. And yet, as we looked, we were able to um, look at an example last show where there was a full body and it was done in pencil and the line work was certainly hesitant and there were a lot of scratchy lines and things being worked out. And apparently, it gets over, it goes over. So, um, if we can get our work to go over, we'll be in good shape. Uh, I looked at this uh, example page I think um, it's not zooming quite the way I would like, but that looks good. And um, hold on here. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to be zooming it particularly good here. Sorry, everybody. Anyway, the feet in particular. Let's talk about the feet. That's where I want to start today. Let's go over to the drawing table.
Um, if you want to have well-grounded figures, I'm sorry, if you want to have credible caricature drawings, you have to have well-grounded figures. There has to be some kind of perceptible contact between your figure and either a ground plane or something that they're sitting on. There has to be something that puts your figure in a 3D space. Because remember, what we're really trying to do here is create a world uh, where your character or whatever lives in. And then we invite the viewer to live in there. And if there's no sense of gravity and everybody's just floating around, uh, the viewer does not relate. So let's make sure that, particularly with uh, women, that we can do their feet in a, uh, a reasonable manner. There's not that many shapes to be, um, to be uh, occupied with here. And a lot of it, of course, has to do with what kind of shoes they're wearing. We're kind of going to be shoe agnostic. We're going to use this example here and um, just concentrate on the arches and stuff and understand that not everyone has a super high heel or whatever. And I'm putting some cartooniness into it specifically because uh, you know, not everybody has great legs, but women always like to be portrayed as having skinny legs. Uh, unless it's some like crazy uh, uh, deadlifter chick from your gym, almost all women want to have thin uh, legs. Let me say this, just as a general rule of, of uh, what I'm observing here, this kind of heel, I, I prefer, if you're gonna make a statement, make it like that. Make the, make something. Don't make it point into nothing. So like even on this one, make it, make it have a statement. You might say, this is kind of wiggly and squiggly. I like that. I want it a little bit funny. I don't want it to be a, a luscious foot. Now, let me say this. These feet are kind of big. Maybe um, we should uh, just sort of take the advice that women would prefer a small foot. You know what I mean? That's probably true. It's a good chance to really lay up on the pressure on the um, pen. I don't know, as we're going to find out later, um, you sort of let it flow, and a lot of what you do ends up being sort of in the moment uh, what makes sense in the proportions that you've been given. Uh, we're going to be doing some, some practice a little bit later with all of these poses, you'll see. I definitely don't mind hanging the end off a little bit. That's too much, of course, but... Um, Getting there, right? Uh, 
I don't mind taking a look at some of the other poses and just um, trying to draw those feet too. This is, we're just going to look at feet here for a couple minutes. I'm trying to do as little drawing as possible and so in some ways that you know you run the risk of missing a plane missing an important plane I think what I've learned though over the years is that um, there are only so many important planes and then after that you're just overdrawing it and what I'm trying to do is maybe go one step below adequate you know what I mean it, where it, it begins to become absurd and that's kind of where, why it's funny but I definitely don't want to overdraw it. You know what I mean? If you were to map it out, I guess, of course, over here is overdrawing it. <laughs> and of course, this is just shitty. You know what I mean? So the question is between this in this area where it's an adequate <laughs> an adequate drawing, you know what I mean? Um, the closer you get to overdrawing it, in fact, the standard of um, likeness, <laughs> verisimilitude. That standard goes up. People expect more. Right up until the moment that you overdraw it. That's why you overdraw it. But I think that there is a realm over here where it's shitty, but it's intentionally so. We're intentionally backing it away from adequate. And this is wherein lies the humor. This is my theory. Okay? All right, let's take a break and uh, we'll come right back to this in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to that drawing show. 
uh, we're going to go back to the drawing board here in a minute. Uh, we're going to continue working on these full body caricatures. And I actually have done some drawing already today, so I have some drawings already to show you. And uh, we're going to maybe build on those and uh, build on the work we've done with the feet and grounding the figure properly. And ultimately, as a goal, I'd like to move beyond the models that we have here in our reference and um, try to create some uh, some creatures, <laughs> try to create some couples, even if the men are just sort of made up out of our minds, because ultimately what would be great would be to incorporate some poses like this into some couple work. And how to do that, how to do it quickly. Um, I think that one of the things we're discovering, as you're going to see here in a minute, is that um, trying to work through every single contour and draw it straight um, takes too much time, even when you're doing it without any underdrawing. Uh, it may be a miracle when you're watching from behind me, but the people who aren't watching behind me are just sitting there um, and they will get bored literally after 30 seconds. So uh, part of what we're going to be doing this week is answering that question. Is this even viable? You know what I mean? And I don't care what all the other artists are doing. I really don't. Um, a lot of them are liars. Let's also uh, make that very clear. A lot of caricature artists will lie about uh, how fast they really are or aren't. So, okay. Um, yeah, this one I did. Um, this one I did a minute ago uh, based on that second pose of the girl in the gray dress. And. Um, the problem is I did it with the underdrawing. Yeah, I did it with an underdrawing. And um, on the good parts, let's talk about what's good about the drawing. Let's see, can we zoom out a little bit? Um, let's see if we can zoom something out here. All right, so one thing we can say about the drawing is that, um, you know, she's grounded. The, the pose is kind of accurate. I have her looking the other way because, you know, one of the things that you realize when you live in Los Angeles and you see uh, enough people doing live TV reads, um, it's not as glamorous as you think. A lot of times they have to be up kind of on a platform positioned in such a way to make it appear on camera the right way, it has to often look absurd in real life. This is true of a lot of different things. Um, but, for instance, why am I all zoomed in here? Hold on one second. Let's turn that off. Okay. Yeah, that's what we want. All right, anyway. Um, yeah, so a lot of times in order to make something look right on camera, it has to look absolutely ridiculous in real life. So. Um, she's propped up in the photo, and in my case, I tried to give her a little bit more of a, you know, zigzag, like this is facing this way, this is boobs are this way, hips are this way, knees are this way type of thing. Uh, but again, done with an underdrawing. Uh, if I were to kind of go over the drawing here, though, let's go over it in blue. The, the things that are important, like to, if, if we were going to try to redraw this drawing and just to kind of think about it in the way that um, Michael Matese talks about in the force drawing method, um, look for these weight bearing angles here. One, two, three, you know, if you can capture those first, oh, here, this, you know, if you capture this, if you capture this relationship, boom. Uh, here. Of course, I'm completely nothing left in this, right? Um, but if you can capture that relationship, I guess I would say that these are the primaries, you know? This is the primary here that I'm doing right here. Uh, and then, you know, maybe, maybe here. If you can capture that, then the secondaries, which would maybe be like balancing here 
You know what I mean? Making sure that this angle here balances over here. This here, what you're doing here with this, that. You know, these are like second, they're important, of course, but these are like the secondaries. That seems to fall into place. You know, of course, you want the collarbone right. You want to make sure that whatever you're doing with the boobs, that that line of symmetry is correct. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you get those, the first, the ones that I did in blue correct, then you will get the ones that I did in um, purple correct. The, the hard part, of course, is doing it um, a la prima. So, yeah. Um, then I went and I did the uh, girl in the turquoise deal who was, like, sitting on the step. Uh, because, again, this would be a good one if you had a man here that you could, like, put next to her. That would, you know, that would be cute. That would work, right? Um, and it turned out good... I feel like the the pose in the photo is like way overboard. Uh, this is fine the way that I drew her, but I didn't really capture the bod great. Um, but it works. But you see that my line work is all over the place. Like I'm not using um, thick and thin lines for any good reason. I'm just like way too thick a lot of the time. So that's something I immediately realized that now that's not going to work. You know what I mean? I cannot be that thick all the time and it might not even come out um, as pronounced on um, on camera as it is in real life but believe me in real life it's no bueno this this is not good and also just the proportions in general it's um, but one thing that I liked about this pose is that if you do it right there should be a nice balance between your uh, thighs pumping forward and this and this you, like you, you start to really get the female anatomy like the the pieces together in this pose and then anchoring it making sure that anchor is good down there um, maybe having even more stability I feel like we should definitely come back to this one okay Maybe I was warmed up. Hopefully we get back to this um, point here in a minute. Um, I did the girl who's like looking over her shoulder. This would be a pose and this would be a drawing. I think any woman would be happy to be drawn in. Maybe not. Who knows? But uh, this one I think turned out good. You know, in a way, this pose, the girl who's doing this pose on stage at a fitness competition is doing it because it's sort of a well work pose it's probably been done for centuries or whatever uh by horse so um you know it works if i can master it that's great um and it would be another one where if there was a man next door it would work out good and finally um the girl in the leopard bikini um you know this one, I made her a little bit more buxom because I'm trying to caricature the form a little bit. And I think it turned out great. Um, I simplified things a little bit. I made it less fitnessy and more just... I, I, also, I threw this shoulder way into the back. The same way it, I, I guess it is. Maybe I could have even um, been better on that front shoulder. This is, this is sort of what we were talking about yesterday about drawing in the Z dimension throwing that front shoulder forward a little even more, you know. Kind of skimped out a little bit on the feetsies. All right, so let's, um, here we are anyway. Um, again, our challenge is to try to do something like this without the underdrawing, though. I mean, that's, that's where we run into trouble. As soon as we start... As soon as we start going a heavy underdrawing, it takes too much time. Pardon me as I adjust lighting here, everyone. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. But, you know. I don't think that that lighting makes it that much of a change for the drawing. Maybe not. Um, all right. Anyway, we're here. Let's talk about that pose again. And I'm, I'm working on 11 by 17, and it might not um, show up down here. Probably not. Okay. Do 
definitely to succeed in this enterprise, I'm just going to have to get used to doing a lot of stuff in silhouette and making like really good choices on the silhouettes. See, I'm already too heavy. I feel like, besides the fact that I'm smudging all over the place, look how heavy I am. You know what I mean? This is, you, you can't get any heavier. I'm, I'm compensating for the fact that my anatomy is up by the fact, but with a heavy line. Don't do that. All right. So that one failed because we started trying to build it from the bottom up, but really, that's not working for us. That approach does not work for us. We have to build it um, in the Z. And what is first in the Z in this drawing? It's her shoulder, you know what I mean? It's this shoulder going like this. And you gotta just do it in such a way that uh, you're gonna leave room. Okay, so far so good. That's funny, but like a high-waisted, uh... there we go, okay, I don't know. You know, I feel like I'm doing too many wispy lines that don't connect. trying to imagine actually doing this in a real setting. How would we do it? One thing I can say is that um, 
we have to simplify how we treat hair. And that's one where area where silhouette may end up saving us a lot. Even so, I'm already like way over time on the hair. I think it looked better over here, right? You add a few gimmicks in there, and it looks better. All right. I don't know, that doesn't look bad, right? Now we forgot the man. You know, it's not about fetishizing the legs, but it's like, all right, she's got legs. We don't wanna, we don't wanna turn it into an anatomical study though. You know, oh, you beat the vastus medialis too, but no, no, forget about that. You know what I mean? Like the idea that we left it a little bit funny is part of the fun. It's a good thing. Would we shade a drawing like this? Let's just take a quick look.
You could, but you know, here's the thing. Don't shade it for the purpose of, uh, you know, just for the sake of shading. You shade it because you want to define another plane. And um, see how it's maybe not even necessary on the face, you know what I mean? I'm hesitant to, to do too much. A little bit, maybe. A little bit. It wouldn't, maybe a little bit. You put in a little bit. But. Let's keep going. I'm going to drink some coffee and uh, play the intro again. I'll be back in one minute. None of them understand that, like, Cleveland is a bombed out third world hellhole. I go on and on. Well, that was tremendous fun. Cat hair apocalypse. Baby, it's like Mad Max, but with cats. Like cat hey, yeah. apocalypse. Fuck being on some chill shit. Oh no, gotta hold that chill shit. I mean, we can really get it. We can joke for it. Oh no, gotta hold that chill shit. I mean, we can really get it. We can joke for it. Oh no. And all right, all right, we're back again. Here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, very good. So uh, let's get back to the drawing table, shall we? Um, one thing that using these Crayolas, the um, the actual straight out of the box Crayolas does, is it kind of because they will smudge on you. It kind of gets you out of the idea that you're going to touch the canvas too much, that you're going to be uh, diddling around too much. I mean, you really have to one stroke it because, oh man, because otherwise these markers will betray you. Like my monitor, these markers will betray you. Every day I come up with another reason why I'm not crazy about this monitor. Ben Q, everybody. Ben Q. Okay. Um, 
let's try the Asian girl, but let's try her in a way that she has a, uh, a partner, you know? And I got to do something. I have to do a little bit of an underdrawing uh, so I don't blow it here. Let's just try to just get a couple of the major axes just so we understand the proportions. All right. Hopefully that works. Like I'm already like sweating everywhere. There's like schmutz all over my hand. Yeah, it really is about the Z. And, and you know, you got to really concentrate. If you're going to draw that way, you have to really concentrate. Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, this is not a great thigh here. Hold on a second here. Not good. If anything, that's the, you see how heavy that is? You know what I mean? You see how heavy these lines are? That's no good. That's no good. I'm not even going to continue. Because it looks like a mess. All right, let's try it over again. If I'm making heavy lines, is I'm panicking. The, the paper is smearing. All right, let's start over again. Again, I had the right idea though. The right idea was we were going to go here. I don't like even doing that much underdrawing, but I could live with myself, at least uh, initially, if that's what I'm doing. All right, let's draw this in the Z.
Too heavy. I'll tell you that much. Too heavy. There's no question about it. Let's assume we can sort of imagine a, uh, a guy who looks more or less like the girl, as <laughs> typically is the case. Not a great smile. I mean, I think it works. Is it taking forever? I don't know. Terrible. You see how terrible that was? Oh my god. Thank god that wasn't on camera. See that? Oh. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm doing all of this caricature and all of these lines, uh, and what am I really getting out of it? Is this so funny or good? No. You know what I mean? It's, it's taking forever. And at the end of the day, is it that great? No, it's not. It's not that great. There's so many lines.
You know what I mean? There's a ton of lines here. And um, he's supposed to be in a Hawaiian shirt. So, like, this is how I would do it. I would do, like, some kind of a simple pad. His other hand is over here. too heavy you know what I mean all those strokes are the same and that's why it looks bad I'm just so heavy it's like I, I can only apply one <laughs> pressure to the fucking brush that's why it doesn't look good Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not even going to bother finishing it because it doesn't do it for me. It is a drawing, it works, but um, it took fucking forever, and uh, I don't think it's that great. Try something without the uh, underdrawing, though. You know what I mean? Let's try something without the underdrawing.
All right, well, here again, I did a lot of drawing. And um, it's not like it doesn't look good. It's just, my gosh, I've been at it so long. And what do we have? We have a busty figure with some noodly legs that don't look that good. Um, could we get this down to fewer strokes if we would have done this like this? You know what I mean? Maybe. But however you finish it, it's still going to have just way too much complication going on down there. I don't love it. Oh, my goodness. Um... I'll cheat again and put another underdrawing in there, but... I mean, the idea is that then you have, like, some kind of, like, really cool-looking dude back here. What I was trying to do here was something like definitely not striking enough, but I don't know if it even is faster. See what I've done here? I just tried to, I did a, you know, I'm thinking like, all right, maybe just, uh,
I don't think this looks bad. Is it any faster? I don't know. You know what I mean? This not those are not professional quality lines. We got to work on the line quality big time. This is credible. I mean, you could believe this is a person who would uh, sit down at this wedding. And this is the husband. He wants to be made to look cool. on the neck but basically the idea was could we get away with not doing a full outline on the guy yeah I mean we can we blew the proportions on the neck I think overall the piece is too long um, it doesn't fit on the screen and it doesn't fit on the page but we're getting I'm not afraid to call it a night there, to be honest with you. Um, not because I don't need more drawing to do, I need to do a lot more drawing, and I need to do a lot more drawing uh, of these models, and that's probably where I'm going to pick it up tomorrow. So thanks for tuning in. This has been That Drawing Show. Uh, lots more to do, lots more practice, so uh, happy drawing. <laughs>